Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing a project by OpenAI, which is called Shape. And basically what this project aims to improve is the interpretability of neural network models by generating explanations for their predictions. Now, this project is based on the shape leap value, a concept that is a cooperative game theory that quantifies the contributions of each feature of predictions in a model. Now, this is also something that they're trying to focus on which is their text to actual video generative content and this is quite amazing guys because you can see that this example as well as showing you guys that a prompt can be converted into an actual image and this is actually insane as it's going to be quite awesome as to what they're trying to accomplish in the future and throughout today's video we're going to be focusing on a little bit more about what this project aims to do as well as taking a deeper look as to what they're trying to accomplish we're not only going to look at a little bit in-depth version of what they're trying to do, but also take a look at their examples, take a look at what they're trying to do in the future, and talk a little bit more about the limitations. Now, with that thought, guys, if you guys haven't subscribed, please do so. Turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please like, uh, comment anything that you want to see in the future uploads. Now, if you guys haven't seen any of my previous videos, please do so, guys as it would really mean the world to me guys i've been uploading a lot and i've been providing you guys the best content so definitely check out these videos as you will get the best like idea as well as the best value that will definitely help you guys out so thank you so much for watching guys and stay tuned as we go on to the next part of the video so shapes algorithm first trains a neural network model on a given data set and then it computes it to a shapely value for each feature to be based off the prediction of their model. So this is how the actual application functions and with shapely values that are used to generate the explanations for individuals. So if you give it a prompt, you're gonna be able to generate it into a highlighted figure. And one of the key benefits of this is that it, the approach is that it can generate explanations for a wide range of neural network architecture, including conventional neural networks, as well as recurrent natural neural networks. And basically the algorithm can be applied to both classifications and regression tasks. Now, this project is going to provide the implementation of the algorithm in Python, along with examples of how you can use it in various different data sets, as well as neural network models. Now, this code is actually available on GitHub, so you can actually utilize it and use it for research purposes. So I highly recommend that you check it out if you're interested in doing and generating 3D objects that are conditioned on text. So I'll leave the links down in the description below as well as the research paper so you get a better understanding of what you can do with this. Now let's take a look at this figure in figure 2 where there is actually a description as to what they're trying to do with the actual model. So in this image you're actually able to get an overview of an encoder architecture that is used in this project. So basically the encoder takes the input both 16k resolution rgb point clouds as well as a rendered rgba images and which is augmented with spidal coordinations for actual foreground pixels and this is what actually outputs the generative content now the purpose of these encoders is to extract the meaningful features from both inputs and it can be used to generate explanations for neural network models and to accomplish this the encoder output parameters are built off of the NLP, which is the actual multi-layer perceptron. And basically through this, the acts of both neural radiance fields, as well as the significant, uh, significant like textual field are then two are combined with the two techniques that are used to generate the 3D representations of scenes from 2D images. And we can see that from this actual diagram over here where the 16 point cloud points are then sent to the one point K clouds. And then from this, these encoders transform the actual images using the MLP layer. And from this, you're able to get the generative concept from the 2D to 3D images. And by using both the MLP as well as the NERF, and basically from these encoders, you're able to extract the features from both the point clouds and the rendered images to use them to generate the explanations of the prompt that is given to the ap actual application to render the actual image and use them to generate explanations for the neural network models and that's basically how this actual figure is explaining the overview of this application 
Now, in addition to generating explanations for neural network models, the actual project also has the ability to generate image based off of a given text prompt. And this is something that they marketed as their project's main hit. And basically these images are generated using a variant of Shapely's value called Shapely Flow. And this is something that I talked about at the start, which basically assigns the importance of scores to the pixels in the image based off the contribution of the final output, which you can see over here. You give it a prompt, say example, for example, a cheeseburger, you're able to get a pixels generated of a cheeseburger in a 3D image. Now these images are generated with shape E as well as the text conditional, basically meaning that they are generated based off the given prompt that you gave as with the text. And for example, you can do a lot of different use cases as well as complex generations, which I'll show you later on in the video. And from like generating these images, it doesn't require a separate text to image model, which is quite useful guys. Cause if you guys can see in different models that I uh, basically talked about and where I demonstrated a text to image uh, application, it's kind of like a model that you use to generate these actual like images like instead with shape e the algorithm is able to directly generate images based off the given text prompt without an actual model and that's one of the great things and one thing that i wanted to emphasize is that it's able to generate 13 seconds or it takes roughly 13 seconds to generate on a single nvidia v100 gpu now this is actually insane because you're able to generate it quite efficiently and effectively obviously you don't have the best quality at this current moment as it's a work in progress but in the future you're going to be able to get the best conceptual idea of their generations in this figure we're able to see that the paper shows examples of text prompts for which the text conditional point e as well as point shape e models exhibit qualitative different behaviors and this is through different prompts that have been given in comparing these two basically both models were trained on the same data set with the same base model size but the outputs they generated in response to certain text prompts differ significantly which you can see over here and in an example we can say a diamond ring you can see like, like right here like how different the actual quality is i'm not saying that this actual quality is great but it's a step forward you know like it's not obviously going to give you the best generative answer as it's a work in progress technology guys but you can see that you're getting a good like demonstration as well a good like detailed idea of a generative content way better than point e samples now for each of these tech prompts shown in this image there's four different samples which we see over here and the purpose of this figure is to demonstrate that shape e will model is to able to like generate more diverse and visual like interesting like outputs from point e model and i mean compared to point e model and basically this is using the variant of shapely value called shapely flows and this is what we talked about at the start as to how it utilizes and makes these types of actual prompts now i just wanted to show and demonstrate how different and how different like different these two models are as to how they're able to generate these actual textual prompts to actual images and it's quite remarkable as to seeing this like at least not remarkable but it's way better to see improvements from shape or from point e to shape e on the topic of comparison let's actually take a look at some of the comparisons to other models now in this research paper we see that the contributors actually compare their models to several other existing models and i highly recommend that you check this out because there's a lot of information that you can get a better idea of some of the actual data sets as well as a more optimized way of understanding the actual application but we can see that the researchers and contributors of this project are able to compare it to a lot of different models but the purpose of this comparison is to demonstrate the strengths and weaknesses of shape e model compared to these other relative approaches of their actual models now one of the actual models that shape e model is compared to is the Etan gan and basically this is a model that generates images using a combination of text embedding as well as a tension mechanism now the researchers of this project find that shapey model is able to generate more diverse and visually interesting images compared to the other models and for certain textual prompts you're able to get the best relative answer now we can see this with this example right here in my opinion this is a conditional image which you can see and you can see there's a comparison of how point e sample 
like takes in and generates these images and you can see how point E sample or shape E sorry sample is able to generate this type of corgi as well as this mug. Now another example we can see is that it's compared to clip.dali which is a recent model that has received a lot of attention for its actual ability to generate a dive, diverse and creative images for text prompts. And we're able to see that the authors of this actual project of Shapey model is able to generate images that are more interpretable as well as easier to understand compared to like Dolly. And this is able to be an attribute to the use case of Shapely value and its ability to generate explanations for neural network like models. Now, we can see another example of an actual bench with a trash can on it. We're able to see that there's a failure for point E to actually generate it. Whereas point or uh, shape E, sorry, is able to generate some sort of value, but it's not actually at the best like generative value of the conditional image. But this is a work in progress, guys. And this is something that I'll talk about in terms of its limitations because th the actual project does have limitations. And this is something that we're going to talk about in the next segment of the video. Overall, the researchers of this actual project have actually stated their future plans and their limitations. And this is something that we can see over here. And this figure seven, they actually find that this model struggles to mine multiple attributes to different objects, and it fails to reliably produce the correct number of objects when asked for more than two. And this is the case when you're able to formulate different types of prompts for like this, for example, this cupcake. You're, if you're able to ask it to generate two cupcakes, you're gonna get a generative like description of this image. But the thing is, you're not gonna be able to get four cupcakes as this is still a work in progress as to their actual generative like algorithm. And this is something that they're trying to continuously work on. Not only is the quality lacking too, but in case of like making certain generative content that is descriptive to what you tell it to do is a basic hinder of this project. And this is something that they're gonna be working towards improving overall. But in my opinion, this is an amazing project and I definitely feel that it's gonna be very useful and used in a lot of different use cases. And this project is an important contribution in the field of basic deep learning, as well as providing a practical and theoretical grounded approach for generating explanations for neural network like uh, models. So I highly recommend that you check this out support it guys because it's going to be quite amazing and it's backed by OpenAI, which is one of the great things about this project i'm definitely going to keep an eye on this because it's going to be quite useful and be used for a lot of different use cases so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you got some sort of value out of this now please subscribe guys and turn on the notification bell it would mean the world to me like this video and comment anything you want to see in the future and with that thought guys thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next time Peace out, fellas. Have an amazing day. Have a great smile and spread positivity. See you guys soon.